Good morning, students. Today we are going to do experiment number two, which is entitled magnetism. So to do this experiment, we need several materials. Like for example, here we have we have two magnets, bar magnets. We have two iron yokes, iron yokes, iron bars. We have a rod, magnetizable rod. We need a pointer, plastic part, plastic pointer. We have a compass. We have a compass. And we have a plotting compass, which is a compass again, but with a small size compass. So, as you can observe, they are, their direction can be deviated due to the magnetic field. So, to do this experiment, as in the previous one, we have several, we have our report consists of several papers, and we have actually to answer several questions and, and fill in the blank on those different papers. So to begin our experiment, first of all, we would like to investigate what's the meaning of a magnet, what's the meaning of a magnet, and uh, what are the different materials that can be attracted to a magnet. So I'm going just to use a magnet for this moment, which is this one. This one is a magnet. It has a, a, a point on one end, a mark, marked end. We are going to use a, a nylon yoke or iron bar a rod, magnetizable rod, and a pointer, plastic part. So the first thing to do is to take this bar magnet and bring it close to those different materials and see if there is any attraction or no. It seems that this bar magnet can attract the iron yoke because it's made from iron. And if I bring it close to the rod, it attracts it too. If I bring it close to the plastic part, which is called a pointer, it seems that it will not attract this one. But if I take the other side of the magnet, the non-marked end, the green part, and I bring it close to those different materials, again, this non-marked end attracts the rod, magnetism rod, and attracts the iron yoke. It seems that this magnet consists of two parts, the right-hand side and the left-hand side, according to this figure, and it seems that those two different parts or ends, those two different ends, they behave similarly with respect to all other objects. So if one end attracts an object, the second end also attracts the same object. And if it does not attract, the second end does not attract the same object. So according to this, we can state that uh, a bar or, or some materials are, co are called uh, ferroma ferromagnetic materials. They are ma made from different uh, materials like cobalt, iron, nickel, and other alloy. And those different materials can be attracted to a magnet. And all others, even though if they are metal uh, object, like for example, gold or silver or aluminum or other materials, they will not be attracted to a magnet, even though they are metallic object. Magnet attracts only one kind one family of materials called ferromagnetic materials made of cobalt, nickel, and iron, and so, and other alloy materials. So, now, what we have to do is to take our compass, 
and put the compass like this. For sure, whenever we want to use a compass, we have to use it far away from any other ferromagnetic material and to be precise, far away from a magnet because the magnet will affect the position of this compass. So to do our experiment, I'm going to take off, far away, all ferromagnetic materials like this. And as the first thing that we can observe here, that this magnet is made from two, two sides. And it seems that this side, as you can observe, the mag the, this magnet, this needle, magnetic needle, is attracted to my uh, pen, because the pen, the tip of the pen is made from iron. If I would like to be more precise, I have to bring a pencil. And using a pencil, like this one, it will not be attracted. So one observation that we can make here is whenever I switch this one like this, it comes back to its initial position. So this initial position actually is identified to be the North Pole the North Pole like this. So let me try to do it. I'm going to rotate it like this. And as you can observe, it finishes by taking its initial position toward, toward the North direction. Because it seems that this magnet has a polarity, and those polarity are called the North End and the South End. The North End and the South End. Actually, the North End by conven convention, we are calling it north end. It points to the magnetic north end of the, of the Earth, which is close to the geographic north end. This is a convention, because we are going to see how the magnetic fields are emitted from the north end and how emitted towards the south end. So now what we are going to do for the next part, Let's take, again, those two magnets. The marked end is called the north end. The unmarked end is called the south end. And take another magnet, one facing the other. As you can observe, whenever we have north end facing the north end, they, they repel each other. They repel each other. It seems that light poles repel each other if I bring south pole towards the south pole, again, it's going to be repelled. It's going to be repelled. And this is the first observation. And the second observation is that unlike poles, if I bring the north pole towards the south pole, and it seems they will attract each other. So unlike pole attract each other, and like pole, and like pole repel each other. Okay, now for sure we can, we can see how, how powerful is our magnet. To know how powerful is our magnet, we take a, a rod, for example, and I bring it close to this rod, and I can observe at what distance it can attract this, this object. For sure, if it is stronger magnet, it attracts this object from a distance which is bigger than what is mentioned here. Okay, now, what about the magnetic field lines? We can draw the magnetic field lines. All what we have to do is to take a bar magnet and put this bar magnet somewhere like this and, uh, and plot a draw the position of this magnet using my pencil, the position of this magnet, like this. This is the position. And take any point here, for example, this point. And now what I have to do, I take my, my, uh, my plotting compass and I bring it close to this point, like this, in such a way that the back tip of the plotting compass is toward this mark, and all what I have to do is to put a mark on the forward tip, forward tip of this plotting compass. And I repeat the same procedure. I slide the plotting compass in such a way that it's backward tip toward this new mark, and put a new mark on the forward tip. 
So if I do this one until I reach the border of this paper, of this white paper, like this, it seems I did a mistake because I had the other magnet close to the plotting compass and it gives me a wrong point. So I take it away and I'm going to put a new mark here on the forward tip of this plotting compass and slide it again and repeat the same procedure until I reach the border of the paper, as I said. Once I reach the border of this paper, I can do the same for another point, for another point, for example, a point here. And those points are previously defined points. So I'm not going to choose the point by my own, but they are defined according to our manual, as you can observe here. So we have several points, and we have to do the magnetic field lines for all those several points. So for another point, I'm going to do it again. Here, I put the plotting compass here, backward tip towards this mark, and put a new mark along the forward tip. And again, like this, and again, I'm sliding it a point and a point. So using, using those different points that are previously defined points, another point here, for example, I'm going to do it for you. And again, put a mark on the forward tip of this plotting compass and slide it, repeat the same procedure repeat the same procedure and, and again now once I finish with those for sure I can join those two successive ones belonging to the same line with a straight line straight line like this this is a straight line another straight line between the two other successive points or marks, and straight line, and straight line. It seems that if I join all those points like this, I get a shape. And this shape defines what we call the magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines. The field, this field, exits the north, exits the north pole. As you can observe here, it goes, it diverges from the North Pole. And if we did a very good experiment, we must have almost symmetrical shape. Now we can do the same for a point near the South Pole and bringing this one again like this. And as you can observe, I don't know if you can observe it, but the the tip, the tip of this, the forward tip of this plotting compass is pointing toward the south pole. It's pointing toward like this, and slide it, repeat the same procedure, but now for the other part of this uh, bar magnet, and again, and again until we reach once we re we do we do we do this one we have to join two successive points with a arrow with a line with an arrow and this arrow must this arrow must give me the direction of the of the needle in the plotting compass so it seems that in this case the field is going toward the south pole it, it is a meeting from the North Pole, it exits the North Pole, diverges near the North Pole, and converges near the South Pole. A, a shape of this one can be given using this. I have a, like this. So, as you can observe, it just takes. As you can observe, 
the field, the field, magnetic field lines exit the North Pole from one end and enters the South Pole from the other end. In another way, it's diverging near the North, converging near the South. And between, on the side of this magnet, also they are closed lines. All of those are closed lines. If I would like to extend this one, it's this one like this, so it's from north towards the south. From north towards the south, it's a side, it's obvious. And here, even this one, this one is from the north, and if the paper is long enough and I continue, it seems that it's a closed line it returns back to this magnetic, this mag bar magnet. And even this one, like this, it goes, and if it is straight enough, so it goes and go and comes back from the other side. It, yes, in another way, it goes to the infinity and comes back from infinity. Now we have to do the same, but using uh, using a U-shaped magnet. A U-shaped magnet like this one. A U-shaped magnet is like this one. What I have to do actually to do this one, I take a magnet, I put my magnet like this, and I take another magnet and put it like this. And I'm just going to join those two ends with a bar like this. This is a U-shape. And whenever we have a U-shape, I have to plot the magnetic field lines from several points. As you can observe here, one more time again, if this one is called the North Pole, it seems that the field exits the North Pole and enters the South Pole. They are diverging near the north, converging near the south. Converges near the south. between the two, the two, the two bars. Here it seems that it is simpler, simpler. And again, if we have some lines going downward like this, they are emitted, diverges from the north towards the south pole. Now, what about if you are using two magnets, but in this case, like this, in this option? I'm putting one magnet like this, and the other magnet like this, in a such way that the north is facing the north. The north facing the north. What will be between them? So again, I'm going to take this floating compass, and put it, put it in between those, and plot the field. It seems that the field, whenever the north is facing the north, would be something like this. The lines that are emitting, emitted from one side of the two facing north poles, emitted from one side, uh, they diverge, but they go, they do not reach the other side, the other, the other magnet. They are between them, they consist of what we call a repelling field. Repelling, they are repelling each other. They are repelling each other. On the side of any magnet, we have closed lines from north towards the south. Between them, this is a repelling field. They repel each other. If I use those two magnets again, but in the option where the north is facing the south, like this, I will get something like this shape. So the magnetic field lines are emitted from the north pole of one magnet, but they are attracted towards the south pole of the facing one, the facing one. Between those two unlike poles, we have an attractive field, attractive field, from north pole of one magnet towards the south pole of the facing magnet. And on the side of any magnet, we have from north towards the south. That's everything concerning the magnetism.